underwear that would protect you from fire. And only that yeah. part of your body right. would right. be protected. You're so in you a would... lake of fire and you're like, just crotch area is protected by custom. <laughs> so basically hell is just a bunch of charred corpses charred with crotches. intact penises. Yep. <laughs> I would have found a way to make that work, though, right? I'm boiling in a lake of fire and I'm turning on the demon. My dick feels great. I can't. My dick, whatever you're doing, all the other areas, my dick feels awesome. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies. Where each week we watch another terrible movie, so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by my former BFF, who is <laughs> neglecting me for his child, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's your child doing? How are it's, you? It's just a lot less upsetting when he shits his pants, Heath. You can understand <laughs> that, right? You can understand. <laughs> I cannot. And we also have seasoned veteran maskist and skin book enthusiast, Cara Santamaria. <laughs> Cara, thanks for joining us. <sighs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was a good answer to the question I'm about to ask, the, <laughs> ugh. but uh, maybe you could elaborate a little bit more. Kara, what are we going to be breaking down today? Honestly, I have no fucking idea <laughs> what you guys just made me watch. <laughs> Apparently, it's called Laser Us, which Classic. I guess is a take on Lazarus. Lazarus. As, word, word play. As they say once. So good. And then never reference again. It's Bible thing. Yeah, but really, it was just like a super weird fever dream that gave me bad nightmares. It was kind of like yep. if David Lynch had a stroke, mm -hmm. and then he found Jesus, and then he had another stroke, and then he was given a fancy <laughs> camera and told, hey, David Lynch, go make a movie, but you can only use the people that are in this grocery store right now to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping that we can try a new thing today where you guys just explain to me what I just watched and I just go, oh, over and over. Uh, well, we can, <laughs> Eli, you feeling good about that? That's what I'm going to need to, you'll be explaining to both of us. <laughs> we'll all explain what the fuck together happened? simultaneously. <laughs> okay, let's see how it goes. First, Eli, tell us how bad was this whatever just happened? <laughs> well, if you loved Scott Pilgrim versus the world, but you wish incest foot fetishes played a bigger part and each page of the script was burned after a single viewing, you will love this movie. It's a Pilgrim's Progress versus the world of cinema. <laughs> that is a deep cut. That's a deep cut. Pilgrim, Scott Pilgrim, Pilgrim's Thank Progress you. is a movie we did. Anyway, is there anything y'all like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Um... I'll nominate it for being the best, worst bastardization of Johnny Cash. Because here's the thing. <laughs> I <laughs> love pick. I love Johnny Cash. How are they going to do him like that? It's messed up. And Amy Winehouse. And th uh, they quote a bunch of people. It's I'm, bad. I'm mad every time. I almost went with best, worst quoting people who would beat me up and take my <laughs> lunch money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amy Winehouse would beat the shit out of you and take your lunch money. Absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say best, worst. I have no idea what happened. So <laughs> I genuinely don't know. So many. There, yeah. I'm looking through. We take little notes. So many times we're just like, what? What the <laughs> fuck is happening? That's like control F. That's like half the script. <laughs> it truly is. And of course, I'm going to go with best worst origin story. So when you check out the WordPress website made for this movie, the inspiration behind this nonsense is that the writer slash director of this film used to manage Christian bands you never fucking heard of. And then one night he had a dream that one of the musicians in one of those bands played music with Johnny Cash. What? I know I invented the rule that you're not allowed to tell your dreams to people that you're not fucking. This movie is pretty sure I can go fuck myself. So I don't know how that adds <laughs> into the mathematics. But yeah. Do we have to have sex with this Canadian guy who made the movie? It's anything would be better than watching this movie. I'm in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Agree. Well, I think we all need to take a quick break. And then we'll be back to tell you all about Laser Us. Lazarus Classic. Laser Us. <laughs> Wordplay. <laughs> Shakespeare. <laughs> Ow, ow. You've, Heath, you've got to breathe. You've got so much Just tension. Really hurt. You've got to breathe. Oh, Jesus. What are you guys doing in my kitchen? 
Oh, hey, Kara. <laughs> yeah, hey. sorry. I was uh, giving Heath a massage, and Noel won't let me do it at our house because I use too much oil. Uh, to be fair, it's a lot, like a lot. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Don't worry. Little industry secret, massage oil, olive oil, same thing. Just put it in a different bottle and charge you more. I'm pretty sure that's not true. Okay. Thank you. Well, look who's a massageologist all of a sudden. Yeah, I think it's massage therapist. And guys, if you're dealing with muscle tension, why don't you just try a Theragun? Oh, what's Theragun? Theragun's a handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. Ooh, that sounds great. Eli's massage technique is anything but scientific. Yeah, I mostly draw inspiration from old wrestling videos, so... Tight. So, uh, yeah, whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. The OLED screen and design make you feel like you're holding something from the future. Just go to their site and check it out. And the Theragun app learns from your behaviors and suggests guided routines. Yeah, they, they actually sent us one to try, and I use it all the time for, like, tension headaches, sore muscles. It genuinely feels great. All right, Kara, we are sold. How do we try it out? Try Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $199. Go to theragun.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's theragun.com slash awful, theragun.com slash awful. Sounds good. Uh, sorry about your kitchen. You want to help cleaning this up? <sighs> no, I think I'm just going to move. Yeah, that's smart. Yep, yeah, smart. That stain is not coming out, so. Ugh. I mean, we could steal his debit card. I don't know the pin. Do you know the pin to his debit card? No. <laughs> there they are. They are beautiful, beautiful babies. Kids, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, what up? I, hi, Dad. Uh, hey, question. I, I already know what you're going to ask. I know what you're going to say. You want to be in Daddy's movie. And yes. Yes, yes. You lucky, lucky kids. Yes, you can be in a movie. You're making a movie? <laughs> I sure am. So, you, you remember when... You remember when it was in uh, Mandates of Eden? No. No. You don't, you don't remember that? We played locally in the Niagara region from 1966 to 69. Yeah, you've, you, you've, you've mentioned that several times, but so no, yeah, I do not I remember. I've had it. So, okay, fine, fine, fine. You know how I manage level heads? Again, no. No. Seriously? Come, come on. This is Canadian Grammy Award winning musician Jim Chevalier was in the band. It's a Canadian. Grammy winner. He won a Canadian Grammy. In what category? It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, I'm making that Scott Pilgrim movie about it. Sorry, Dad, you're making a Scott Pilgrim movie, which, by the way, came out four years ago. <laughs> about, P. about the Canadian bands you manage. Yes, 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 I am. Also, your mom's going to be my daughter, and I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take off her shoes like... Super slow. Oh, God. I think I might throw up. Yeah, Dad. I do not want to be in this movie. Best. Like, so I'm going to do the shoes. So much. What's mm. wait, wait, wait. Then, Okay. If you don't want to be in my awesome movie that everyone is going to love, uh, what do you want then? Why, why are you uh, here? We just wanted to know your pin number. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's one, 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 one. Got it. Thanks. Okay. Are you, are you guys going to write it down? No, we, we got it. Yeah, Dad, we're, one, we're, one, we're one. good. We're good. Don't I need, need to write it down. I got a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to open up with an inspirational quote. It says, for all the dreamers who gave it their best shot and failed. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Which made me so happy. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> I love it when a movie starts with some self-awareness, but it might have been by accident. Either way. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, that's the new tagline for our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the dreamers who gave it their best shot and failed. That was absolutely not self-awareness. That was like the guy who wears the anti-Antifa shirt to the rack. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what that was right there. You know that just means fa for fascist, <laughs> right. right, buddy? <laughs> Those antis cancel. Yeah. And this is uh, where we're going to introduce the 27 Club, a statistically irrelevant myth that all great musicians die at 27, which is why all the actors in this movie will be 48 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is kind of weird how like 
I guess we'll get there, but he's supposed to be young still and all of his bandmates are supposed to be old, but they all kind of look the same age to me. Definitely. Yeah. They all just look old. I don't understand the timeline of anything that happens. I'm going to have a lot of questions. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I feel like I get the gist of this movie. Like, just the gist. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I think this movie just gets the gist. <laughs> I think this movie's hoping that everybody gets nothing more than a, a small gist. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think what they actually did, and I think this will start to make sense. Like, bear with me. The editor was like, okay, we have 37 minutes of decent footage. <laughs> Do that? But we need to make an hour and a half film. So we're just going to go slow it down sometimes, freeze frame, put up an interstitial. <laughs> Maybe we'll do like a thing where it goes D -d 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 -d, and then we'll strobe it and then we'll like play it backward because that's all this movie is. It's just like effects. Yeah. yeah. And bigger margins. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, bigger <laughs> margins, that. triple space. That's This is a triple spaced movie. Yeah, it's like someone did a mean roast in movie form of Edgar Wright. <laughs> Someone's like, oh, look at me. I have comic book titles before my scenes. That's you. That's you, Edgar, right? That's what you're like. <laughs> and that's the thing. They use comic book like style, but not just comic book style. They use like 15 different styles and blend them all together. But like for no reason, because nobody in this movie is a superhero. No. Nothing no. about this is comic-esque. No, the older gentleman who you should absolutely Google who wrote slash directed this movie saw Scott Pilgrim when it came out four years before he made this. And he was like, yeah. I'm going to do that with the moving and the and the then the titles. Clearly. <laughs> that makes so much sense, Eli. That's the whole movie now. Yeah. We don't even have to do the rest of the episode. Yeah, we've nailed it. <laughs> so <laughs> now we're going to head over to Niagara Falls, Canada. Prologue. The deal. Yeah. So we're getting the classic, like, the devil doing the deal with the musician, giving him the demon guitar so he becomes a star in exchange for his soul, right? That, Like, that part I think I get. That's, like, the entire plot that I understand. Do I have that right? That's what's happening here? I think here? so, because the yep. idea is that this guy wants to be famous. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the right. whole thing. Like, I guess it's, like, a gluttony or greed or something. So he's, you know, he's committing some deadly sin. He wants to be famous. Pride, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, okay, you can be famous if you use this guitar. And now I have your soul. No, I have your firstborn. Yeah. Is it soul and firstborn or no, both? No, I think it's just your firstborn. Yep. He's just going for firstborn here. Also, Satan didn't learn English for this meeting. <laughs> no. Or yes. bother to clear his throat. Or the rest of the movie. <laughs> to be clear, I'm pretty sure Satan is a woman in this. Sometimes a woman, sometimes a guy. I believe the actor is female who plays Satan, yes. All right, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this movie is also sexist. Which is progressive? <laughs> I thought it was progressive. No, it's not progressive. It's not progressive? No, of course. Kara the succubus, it's not the incubus. <laughs> <laughs> no, the bad, the, the, the horrible deal with the devil. Like, isn't that already the trope that that that's what women do to men's souls. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know what? Making yeah. a woman literally Satan is less progressive than <laughs> I, I thought so. now yeah, that I, I hear it. So. Yes, yeah. this is a good point. <laughs> Only if Lil Nas comes over and snaps her neck, then it's progressive. <laughs> then, it's, then it's next level. I did enjoy that the demon doesn't ever make any, like, we don't understand. It's just like whispery, weird demon talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's translated. Sometimes like, we psst, get it. Psst, 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 talk, demon, the guitar, like a brother. No, 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 no. no and no. then the demon's like, <clears throat> sorry, got a call. It's just, welcome to Guitar Center. I'm Dave. Like, I wanted it to, like, be at a guitar center. Because I feel like- It might have been. That, that, that's got to happen, right? In these scenarios. I feel like they might have been at a guitar center. It was just like, the guitar center in Canada that like in the corner of some small town in Canada that nobody shops at. And so it's, it's like this pasty employee wearing a cloak because the sun is too bright. She's like, welcome to the guitar center. Sorry, that's Michelle. She she has a thing. If you could just buy your guitar from her. She, she really does know her way around a guitar. I swear, once you get past her dropping mysterious blue pebbles at the end of every sale, she's really quite nice. Okay, what is the deal with the blue pebbles? Thank you. That is a great question. My answer, fan theory, and I think it will play out, every time the devil gets excited in this movie, she shits blue pebbles. <laughs> she shits a little bit of blue pebbles. That's, Wait, that's that, that's not a theory. That's, that's exactly what happened. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we didn't <laughs> watch her shit them. I theorized the shitting. Don't you? Because the devil's so excited. Okay. Blue pebbles. But why are they blue? Throughout the movie, it's just like, and also devil pebbles for no reason. That is true. Why, Why are, are they, they blue? Babu di babu die. That's all the paint that they had. Remember, they were in the grocery store. That's right. <laughs> oh, wait, we haven't gotten to that yet. No, we have. We have. <laughs> we have. <laughs> 
so now we cut over to Jimmy Laser. That's our protagonist who's just sold his firstborn to the devil for a guitar mm -hmm. being interviewed about why he wants to be famous. And it's it's a VH1 behind the music for a guy we will later learn disappeared and didn't get famous. <laughs> oh, yeah. How'd they make that video? Right. But he wasn't going to get famous. He was going to get gospel famous in the Toronto gospel scene. <laughs> yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's like selling your soul to be a podcaster. There's no, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta aim higher, Jimmy. You gotta aim higher. <laughs> There's also during this scene, he has like a little sticker. And I mean, little sticker on his guitar case that says famous. And the interviewer's like, how come your guitar stick case says famous? And he says, cause I want to be famous. And that's it. Yeah, that's the exposition. <laughs> that's all we need to know about this character for the rest of the movie. They do periodically show him just walking down the street with his empty guitar case, which we will understand why, sort of, maybe not. Do um, we understand that? With that sticker famous on it over and over. Like, it's the most obvious garb. I just hate this movie so much, you guys. It's, it's <laughs> not even almost famous, the movie. Yeah. No. <laughs> almost, almost famous. Almost famous is a good movie. This is not. Then we cut over to some of their ravenous fan. <laughs> this is just like one teenager who the maker of this movie paid to be like, they are very good at music. I like them. Oh, yeah. Can I have right. $8? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what I love the most? Hate the most? Love, hate the most? <laughs> they never actually play any Jimmy Laser music. No, they do no. not. We have no <laughs> idea what his music sounded like. None. They set up a whole movie to like give us a big thing at the end and it's just like, end of movie. We didn't <laughs> we didn't record any music. They show footage of him playing, but it's always against some sort of other weird backdrop. So you never <laughs> hear what he's playing. <laughs> it's so crazy. Oh. <sighs> so now we're going to cut to 27 years after the disappearance of Jimmy Laser. And at this point, I'm fully confused. I'm more confused. Every new scene, I get more confused. But I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it. So the idea here is that this guy sells his soul to the devil. No, his firstborn. Yep. But he says he doesn't have a firstborn. So <laughs> jokes on you, devil. And then he wants to be famous in Canada for gospel mm -hmm. music. And then... He disappears at 27. No. And then he disappears. Does he disappear at 27 and then it's another 27 years later? Yes and I yes. I think so. Mm -hmm. And so he's 53? Uh, so yeah, we will later like learn. I'll, I'll make this less confusing. We will later learn that he hasn't aged yeah. because of the devil magic. So no, I yeah, think we learn that like in five minutes. Okay. Well, then yeah, <laughs> he's, yeah. he's 53. There's like two or three things about this movie that they're like, we'll make very clear to you. <laughs> and then yeah. everything else will be like, what just happened? Okay, so he's 53. But later when we meet his bandmates, they're clearly not 53. Are they? Yeah, it's unclear. They're like 42. They're Canadian 53? Yeah. I don't know. And then his Metric. daughter, who we'll meet also, who's supposed to be young, is clearly 45. Spoilers. <laughs> Everything about right. this is really weird. Okay, so whatever. Yeah, yeah so oh, so he does have a firstborn, by the way. <laughs> Spoiler alert. We find out right away and then ignore. Like, he makes the deal with the devil and then he's like, ha, I don't even have a firstborn. And the devil's like, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, and then we just don't hear about it for a while. And he's like, shh, shh, shh next scene. <laughs> no, that's that's for the end of the movie, devil. You're ruining it. And the devil's like, <laughs> stupid, salah, salah, la. <laughs> <laughs> the devil does speak in tongues a lot. It's yeah, kind of amazing. a lot of made up devilies. Yeah. So this is where we're going to meet Jimmy's old manager who had a vision that Jimmy played music with Johnny Cash. The only reason I point that out is not because it will be relevant to the movie, but because that's why the movie got made. If you'll remember my best worst, the writer director of this movie was like the guy I managed. I had that dream. I should make a whole movie about it. And his manager is an African-American gentleman, although I guess African Canadian, because this is set in Canada. He's a black guy. Mm -hmm. And his manager is a, a black guy who has the power to bring people back to life. If you're wondering if that'll ever come up in the movie, no, no, it will not. It will never be. Oh, relevant. do they say that? They yes. reference <laughs> what? Yeah, multiple He's got the power times. to raise the dead. Well, I mean, Lazarus, laser oh, us, right? right? That's the story of a guy getting 
raised from the dead by yeah. Jesus that never gets tied into this no, movie. No, that never happens. We do only learn about the Lazarus connection later in the movie. And I have to admit, this is my density, that I am like, what is Laser Us the whole time? I was like, that's wow, the weirdest really? name for a band. Kara was <laughs> sitting at home being like, "It's why not Laser We or We Are I a know. Laser? We are la- I was so <laughs> confused. Laser Us. I was like, what is that? There's no lasers either, though. They you don't know? do either thing. Thing. You're right. It's spelled with a Z and everything, and then there's no lasers. But when they said that the manager could raise people from the dead, I was like, that seems like a weird line of work. And then I, I remembered, you know, Hendrix, Lennon, Mama Cass. Actually, that'd be damn handy power as a band manager. Right? Now that I think about it, yeah, that'd be like one very useful thing. <laughs> so now it's time <sighs> for Chapter One: Freedom. However, the person who made this movie doesn't know that the abbreviation of chapter is ch period so it appears on our screen as chap period one freedom oh yeah why are there chapters great question (laughs) there's a lot of them too they're trying to do a graphic novel movie that's i don't know (laughs) wait so it's a comic book graphic novel slash what dream a band manager from Canada <laughs> once had? Yes, right. it's a dream. Okay, so we're now into chapter one, even though we've already watched like 10 minutes of this movie. What, yeah, so preacher pulls up. Yeah, there was no epilogue title card, was no. there? Oh, no, there was a prologue title card. <laughs> yes, there was. I don't okay, know. We, we just finished the prologue. Here we are in chapter one. And the one. beginning, the beginning of the movie, mind you, had a lot of reading. It was a lot a of reading, irri- it was a little irritating for me. <laughs> a lot of reading like, and a montage is how we started out. Yeah, yeah, so. Preacher pulls up, this is the manager, pulls up in his mom van, which, by the way, this movie will never acknowledge is not like a 67 El Dorado or something. They just drive around in this fucking minivan mom van the entire movie, and no one at any point is like, is there a car seat back here? (laughs) (laughs) But he pulls up to a town. Well, he pulls up to some devil pebbles, right? He does. But first, doesn't he change out of his preacher collar into his bolero tie? Yeah, he does. <laughs> That's very important. He's taking off my preaching collar and putting on my Buffalo Wild Wings attire. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of great. I actually kind of like Freedom. I think he's my favorite character. Yeah. 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 Definitely the strongest. Yeah. And Jimmy is smoking a cigarette. Well, no. he's... He's not smoking. He never smokes. He's fondling a cigarette. <laughs> he yeah. never smokes in the whole the whole movie. He's about to smoke his last cigarette for some reason. This is a theme. They reference it 400 times for no fucking reason. And it makes me crazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's Chekhov's gun that never gets fired, loaded, uh, or even acknowledged. <laughs> you're yeah, I'm like, you're giving it too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he finds Jimmy Laser in an old horse trailer and he's like, hey, do you want to go do a movie? And he's like, yeah, we can go do a movie. Which brings us to chapter two, <laughs> the dream. Well, Wait, you missed first, the most important part of the freedom chapter. The Bob Dylan reference? Of course. Thank you, Heath. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> at this point, the movie tells us, by the way, everybody, in 1979, Bob Dylan became a born again Christian. And yeah, he did. He did. But just a reminder, everybody hated his shitty gospel music (laughs) at that point. Eventually, he came to his senses and made an album called literally Time Out of Mind in like 97 (laughs) that won a bunch of Grammys and was like, oh, Bob Dylan's back to making real fucking music. Thank God. (laughs) And then deconverted from born again Christianity. He was a born again Christian for three years. (laughs) He stopped. I would not be like, oh, yeah, you know who listens to our podcast? Tim Stevenson from Bayonne, Ohio. I mean, then he tried to kill us after three years. He hates our show now. But let me tell you, those three years, he loved it. Was it was weird. It was weird. And they also said right after, Jimmy Laser did the same thing and nobody knows. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking that so, so happy. It's your movie. <laughs> Why would you put in, Jimmy Laser did the same thing, but nobody gives a fuck about me. <laughs> this, is, this is the writer-director <laughs> of this movie's story, and he will constantly be like, when I die, I'll be buried in an unmarked grave and no one will mourn me. All right, Wait, chapter that, two, the fucking dream. Is that Jimmy Laser or is that Johnny Cash? The, oh, this is just the, my <laughs> own. That's my announcer voice for the whole movie because okay. it's the one they used. Okay, because it sounds a lot like your Johnny Cash. 
There's a lot of Johnny Cash in there, yes. I injected methamphetamines into my penis and tried to write a whole book about it. There's only so many voices. They run together eventually. June cut it out. <laughs> Reese Witherspoon was prettier than my wife is. All right, so now we're on to chapter two. I could do an entire podcast just shitting on June Cash. I just want to throw that out there right now. Clearly. A lot of people in atheism are getting themselves canceled for good reason. That's my line as the sand is shitting on June Cash. All right, chapter two, the dream, which begins with the quote, it's better to burn out than fade away, which again is so sad considering that this movie is about a man who never was and never will be famous. Yeah, yeah. don't quote Kurt Cobain or High Fidelity. I was furious about this. <laughs> Every time they made a quote, I was mad. <laughs> so this is where Freedom points out that he hasn't aged in 30 years. Although that's clear from earlier, but yeah. Yep. <laughs> I can see with my eyes. There's also, yeah. uh -huh. there's this tiny moment in this scene, but I love it so much. Freedom, he's trying to have a heart to heart with Jimmy and he tries to hike his leg up in that like we're buddies thing, but the straw in the set is too high. So his leg is like, he's doing like a full standing split for about a quarter of a second. And then he puts his leg down like, ow, ow, too high. Wanted shorter, ow. Anyways, this movie is about going to an old rock club called The Moose. And he's like, okay. okay. Yeah, that's like, we're going to go to The Moose for uh, for reasons. <laughs> we'll get to that. They, yeah, everything is for reasons. They never tell us why. But also there's, there's something in this scene about baby gibberish. And I remember it distinctly, but I don't remember <laughs> the context. Like, why are they, they, you, you, they use the word baby gibberish? They do. Yeah. In the dream that Freedom had, <laughs> okay. Johnny Cash was talking in baby gibberish to a baby. Also, there were blue pebbles. End of explanation. Yep. That's what I got. That is, Yeah, that's all they give us. Yeah, that's all there is. There's, there's nothing we can dig and dig. There's nothing underneath. <laughs> no, wait, Eli. So you're good at this. Come on. You're, we're, you're like our only hope. So you can. Oh, so here's where this goes. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. He has a, a baby, a fact we already know from the beginning of the movie. Oh, right, because the devil told us. Right. That's supposed <laughs> to be a hint that later on in the movie, that guy will have a baby. <laughs> Wait. Johnny Cash speaking in baby gibberish in Freedom's Dream is supposed to be a hint that Jimmy Laser has a baby? <laughs> yep. <laughs> just so, wanted to be clear. Okay. This is the journalist in me. I'm just going to restate yeah. what you told me to ensure gog, that gog, I'm understanding it. Goo goo, I injected <laughs> methamphetamine also, into my penis. If, if you make a deal with the devil after your firstborn child is born, for your firstborn child, that baby then learns to speak devil gibberish? Ah, see, I can understand your confusion here. So here's a part of the plot that I really only got on my second viewing. You watched this piece of shit twice? <laughs> I watched it twice. Absolutely not. my wife is away for her birthday weekend and my child was asleep and I was like, well, it's four in the morning. I might as well just stare into the middle distance with the movie in front of me. What is wrong with you? What the devil is doing is the devil is coming for his firstborn child on his firstborn child's 27th birthday. That's why it keeps telling us about the 27 club and it's 27 years later and he was 27 when he made the deal with the devil. Yeah, it was before the child was born, right? No, it's exactly, oh. it must be, by the nature of the timeline of this movie, it must be the exact second his child was mm, born. But he doesn't know. Yeah, so his kid was born and then he went to Guitar Center that day. Exactly that day. He <laughs> wait, must wait, 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 but... Do we know that he knows that the child was born? Because it seems like when he says, I don't have a firstborn, he believes himself. If he does, yeah. then the scene flashback we see later of him kissing the child and leaving his family is very strange. Right, but the baby is a baby, not a newborn. Right, but that's movie though. Because movies will put like a nine-year-old out there and be like, this is... <laughs> This child was just born. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> just put some gray shit on it. Right, face. exactly. They just <laughs> sticky it up and they're like, there it is. Newborn baby. Yeah, okay. So basically he knowingly accepted the deal with the devil. Or even crazier, he thought the devil was not aware that he had a child. And the devil was like, <laughs> yeah. seriously? You think I don't know? Uh, yeah, you have a kid. And he's like, oh, but... I hit her driver's license under my wallet. It's like, no, I can, I know where it is. Yeah, this like, is this is the weird Christy inconsistency that I cannot deal with. Like, okay, so he believes that the devil has the magical guitar powers, mm -hmm. but not magical 
baby knowledge powers. It's like when my dad tells me that he's worried that I'm going to hell. And I'm like, dad, again, I don't believe in God. You know, and he's like, he's like, no, but you made a deal with Satan. And I'm like, again, there's no Satan either. When are you going to get this? Really? I can't just have the one without the other. They all go together in the magical spell. Kara, we are so grateful to have you on our podcast. But if you made a deal with the devil and you ended up on our podcast, you got a bad bargain. <laughs> you should send your dad an episode. This will really help help him. He'll be like, honey, I listened to that episode you were on. There's no way you made a deal with the de one of the minor demons, maybe like an assistant to the regional manager. Of one of the well, demons. Eli, I did get three mini off brand Emmys. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I just want to be locally famous in my in my my general market. Come on. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> All right. So, yeah, they decide that the plot of the movie is for them to get the band back together and go to the Moose to try to play one last concert. I think but the way the band is only two people. <laughs> the band is only two. We will learn that the band is only two people. It's eventually three people. Mm -hmm. It's going to be two right now. This is where the van gets stolen for no reason, right? I truly believe it is because some mom needed to go pick up the kids from soccer practice. And she was like, <laughs> you know what, Dwayne? I said you could have it for the afternoon and it's five o'clock. So she drives off in the van. And you filmed it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is where they're going to go to the house where dreams come true. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. They get the van back, though, don't they? They do. They will, yes. They will later have the van. But they never explain how. Well, this, I think this is the plan. Their plan, <laughs> the van gets stolen, and their plan is like, okay, you know what? That was probably demons who stole the van. We should, uh, we should walk to the demon house that I know about. I know some local demons. They probably took the van. We're going to walk to their house and get the van back. Exactly. Right? They go to a demon Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> to get their van back, which, to be fair, that is where their van will be. So it's a good plan. <laughs> how do they yeah. know how to get there? They nailed it. Yeah. So they pull up outside the demon house. They notice their van and they do rock, paper, scissors to decide oh, who's no, going to go inside. This is the worst part of the whole. I, this is the really best <laughs> part of the movie. So Jimmy throws rock and his manager throws paper and his manager is like, paper, I win. And he goes, this isn't rock. It's rock and roll. And, I wrote and he does my the notes, devil wow, finger. <laughs> I'll never have a suicidal thought ever again. As long as this actor and these writers want to be here, I have to let myself be here too. <laughs> no, it's so I've bad. cured existential dread. He does the horns thing. Like he turns the fist for rock into like, you know, you put those two fingers up. Now it's the horns, like rock and roll horns <laughs> thing. Yep. That, that, that wouldn't beat, that still doesn't beat, pay, whatever. Devil horns beat paper. <laughs> it does. It skewers it. Either rock always beats paper because that's stupid to begin with, but now it does. It didn't change. It. Just take it seriously. It's a serious game. Keith, you have to take it seriously. Keith, do you know why rock beats paper? Rock clearly beats paper. Because it shreds. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, <amazing. laughs> okay. that's where we should end you worked the episode. In, you worked in a squint and an arrow, and now I'm happy about it. Okay. That is the whole movie, by the way. <laughs> Squeedly D scene change. So much more hard rock. So that means it's time for chapter three, or as this movie will put it, chap three, Z is for smoothie. Do we have to do all the chapters, Eli? <laughs> do we have to do this movie? Can we just... There's so many chapters. We got some more rock slash paper based puns we could do with Heath instead. Shreds. Okay, so we're in the demon house now. Mm hmm. And by the way, it has nice decor. I kind of like the demon yeah, house. Yeah, it's, it's got cool like inside. a spooky underground wet mansion vibe going. <laughs> yeah, it's a wet man. That's a great way to describe it. It also has demon pebbles. I mm -hmm. still have no idea what those are, but those are there. Yep. Yep. And this is where we meet woman standing in the basement, just standing there in the dark, and she needs some help, and she's wearing fancy red shoes. So Jimmy... Helps. Yeah, what? Oh, what no, no. Is well, this? I'm sorry. I must, I must lay out this foot fetishism that got snuck into this movie. What is this? This woman, who is supposed to be like the femme fatale, is like, I can't take off my shoes. They're cursed. Will you take <laughs> right. off your shoes for me? And he's like, he's like, yeah, lots of people just take off their own shoes. Are we flirting right now? What's <laughs> 
What's happening? <laughs> They're cursed? So Jimmy Laser takes off the circle scarf he's wearing and then uses it to slowly and pornishly remove her shoes. I wrote in my notes, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. This must be from my many vids. I'm so sorry. I'll find a Christian movie for us to watch. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It gets a little freaky and it's a little, it's got that Star Wars vibe because she's his daughter. Oh, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Do we Spoiler know that? Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. This is his daughter. Yeah. Don't worry. The movie won't stop that from them treating each other as love interests until 10 minutes before the end when they reveal that it's his daughter. And they're supposed to be, as you explained to us earlier, Eli, they're supposed to both be 27, but they're both clearly 45. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And not sexy. Mm -mm. Neither of them is sexy. And also, they do nothing to induce sexiness. Other than the red shoes, she's literally wearing a puffer vest. Yes. It's like it's like <laughs> Canadian sexy. Sorry, my Canadian friends. Like, what are they doing? All our Canadian listeners are like, I don't know what you're talking about. You said puffer vest and I needed to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> no, Winden. And eventually she's like, I'm smoothie. Her name is Z smooth, like smoothie with a Z. Like Z Moothie. It will Why? never make sense. Why is it that will her never name? Matter. I have no idea. Is that is there a Christy reference to that? No, I wish. Oh, okay. you know what it might be. Okay, hit me. So he then right. So laser us is like Lazarus. So the Z is like an S in laser, but they made it a Z. So smoothie, they made the S a Z. But who's named Smoothie? Who's named Smoothie? Smoothie is a Bible. Okay, I have no idea. No, no idea. Her name smoothie? Be Zally or Zamantha. Smoothie is the <laughs> apostle they cut in the later versions of the Bible, but he makes right. like, he's just there making shakes for everybody. He's really great. He's super into beach body. He wants to be a personal trainer, but he just doesn't quite have it in him. It's confusing enough that don't they have to clarify in the movie? She's like, I'm smoothie. And he's like, yes. you're what now? And she's like, yeah, it's like smoothie with a Z. And he's like, what? Later in the movie, Freedom will be like, that's a stupid name. Is it going to matter to the movie? And she'll be like, nah, not really. And wait, wait, wait. Question, which I think is important. Who is Jonathan Merriweather? That is Jimmy Laser's real name. Jonah Merriweather is oh, Jonah. Yeah, maybe his real name, not Jimmy Laser. Oh, so yes. she's like, I'm looking for my father, Jonah Merriweather. Yes, which is his real name. And he's like, that's weird. Your name is Smoothie. That's also weird. I don't recognize you at all, even though I'm your father. Yep. I got to be honest. I think I might have had a kid and then gone right to a guitar center, but I'm not sure <laughs> that was a weird day. And also, I wasn't involved in naming her. And also, I don't know my own birth name. <laughs> right, <laughs> apparently. But just as they're about to make it out, they run into the guitar hunter. Okay. <laughs> this scene is, I think, amazing. Is this a good movie after this scene? This scene is no. as good. It's as bad as a good scene can be. It's a guitar battle attached to electric murder machines to death, and it still manages to suck. It's a guitar hero scene, right? Yes. So like Yeah, it's a guitar hero scene and it's trying to be grindhouse, but they didn't have the equipment to actually make any of the music. Yeah. Right. So instead, they just play weird like found <laughs> sounds from the internet over Correct. the whole scene. It's so sad. So we watch them like playing horse with a guitar basically. That's, That's exactly, what they're doing. I was just about to say it is <laughs> yeah, horse. It's, ho it's horse with guitar. Death horse with guitar. <laughs> This is a t the, so the devil and his team of like leather demon cowboys are they're doing some sort of guitar hero contest with Jimmy Laser and like two other just ra random dudes mm -hmm. who are also guitar players who have to like correct try to play the thing just right or else they get shocked by the giant electrocution machine that's attached to the guitar they're holding and they're in a pool of water and. None of the actors in this scene can play the guitar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're just sort of like, they're just going, billy, 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 billy. They're just <laughs> gently patting their hands up and down a guitar as whatever they fucking found on stockfootage.org is like, they might as well have a grand piano playing over the sound, <laughs> yeah. over these hands moving vaguely in guitar directions. This is also where we meet the vicious virtuoso who the subtitles tell us is 75% human, 25% android, 
and 5% demon. Well, no, they got the, they, they added to 100 correctly to give, okay. to give them credit. They, it was 70% <laughs> human, 25% android, 5% demon. Still weird though. Like how did they decide on dividing that up? Satan was like, okay, we're going to do a guitar hero test occasionally on guitar. We deal with a lot of guitar players. That's pretty much how we get everybody's at Guitar Center. We're going to need a virtuoso who is mostly human, but partially android, no. partially demon. The android part is the part that I really am not understanding here. Well, like, and that's the thing, right? If you're picturing a 70% human, 25% android, 5% demon, and you're not picturing a skinny guy at the back of a nightclub who you don't want to stand too close to or leave your drink unattended around, that's yeah. who the vicious virtuoso is. He will have nothing android-like about him. Oh, it's Frank Zappa. We're watching Frank Zappa. That's that's who this guy is for sure. It's supposed to be his ghost. He's a guy in a safari hat. Yep. With like a weird ear. And that's it. Like, and he like looks weird. He looks like demon-esque. I'll give him that. But like, he doesn't mm -hmm. have a bionic arm or anything. Nope. No, he does not. Yeah. Where was the Andrew? He he just had like, like alerts. Like yeah. little, also, I don't know. <laughs> also, nothing about this movie is like future set. Like I he, love the like, idea that he's just really customizable. <laughs> like he's just, no, he runs on a Linux-based system, so you can do all sorts of cool stuff with Steve. That's what the Android comes from. I can see why you'd be confused. <laughs> really, it's about the human and the demon guitar thing. But yeah, he, he, he can get like messages and stuff. It's cool. I think that they literally think that if they just use like comic book layers and like put up some comic book looking text, that now it's also a post-apocalyptic like future dystopian film, but that's a different genre. That is very true. That, that <laughs> like they is don't, correct. You can't just like say shit like that and, and it <laughs> becomes true in this world. Kara going, that's a different genre is the best way to sum up this fucking movie. Because <laughs> <laughs> every three minutes they are on a different genre. You're so we right. just went from many vids to a guitar battle. And then Satan shows up in the middle of the guitar battle and force chokes Jimmy a little bit because... And again, this is so fucking stupid, but I promise you, this is the plot of the movie. Jimmy traded his firstborn for a magic guitar that would make him famous so he could be a famous gospel performer in Toronto. <laughs> and then instead of using it, took it apart and hid the pieces. Right. And so now Satan's like, well, go go put my guitar back together. That's bullshit. I've got to use it. <laughs> is right. the plot of the movie. Wait, wait, but why? You're so right, Eli. That's the whole plot. Like, did something bad happen with the guitar and that's why he took it apart oh, and buried it? I actually know the reason why and it will be revealed towards the end of the movie and it's the eighth most disappointing thing <laughs> ever to happen to humanity. <laughs> is it that, did Jimmy catch on to... The fact that maybe that demon at Guitar Center was the devil and I no. might have made a deal with the devil. So I better take apart this guitar and hide it in three pieces. Maybe I have a child. That's what I thought happened. It's so much dumber than that. And that will be revealed towards the end of the movie. Interesting. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, first, let's let's just close out the little Guitar Hero contest here. <laughs> so Vicious Virtuoso is about to like do a big difficult to play guitar lick and Jimmy's going to have to copy it. They blindfold Jimmy which doesn't matter if you're playing nope, music by ear, that which is a weird thing. <laughs> and then Vicious Virtuoso does like a big dancey thing with like pump fakes and stuff. Again, doesn't matter if you're blindfolded. And then he plays one note to like warm up before he's going to do his like really hard devil guitar lick. <laughs> and I think what happens is he plays that one warm up note and then Jimmy's like, bling, nailed it. I nailed your one, your one note. I'm, I'm out. I'm out of the... Uh, Demon house. You have to let me go. It's actually even more stupid than that, Heath, then, right? Because he plays his <laughs> That's one. That's not what happened? Yeah. He plays his one practice note and then daughter Red Shoe's sexy love interest unplugs the android's amp. And because she unplugged his amp, that's all Jimmy has to copy for their weird game of guitar horse. So Jimmy's like, aha, thanks for unplugging his amp. He plays the one note and then he's allowed to leave. Oh, the one note was all that we heard because she unplugged it right after the one note. Exactly. Oh, smooth, smooth move. Smoothie, yes. <laughs> smooth move by Smoothie. And that was why that was her name. Nailed it. Right. 
which means it's time for chapter five, Rebuilding the Guitar, which is basically Jimmy's going to walk outside and explain the plot of the movie to Freedom, even though we just watched and learned what the plot of the movie is. I know. They're like, just in case that this trying to be Mad Max, but isn't anywhere near Mad Max film (laughs) doesn't make sense to you. We're just going to lay it all out exposition style. Yeah, so they explain the plot of the movie to Freedom and they head off to go put together the guitar, which is what the movie will be about now and not later. <laughs> God, what? Okay, I think I think that's what happens. I think this might be the best movie ever or the worst movie ever. It's really hard to tell. I don't know. This I don't is know. definitely worse than any movie you've ever made me watch. <laughs> but also better. And the best, not, right? Not, only because you guys have a warped sense of good movies now <laughs> from doing the show for so long. All right. We are going to have a kind of angry fight with Kara right now. Yep. I'm going to take a quick break. And then we'll be back for more Laser Us. Lazarus. Laser Us. Cereal for breakfast again? Boring. Squid in the nail. Did I hear boring breakfast? Not while I'm in town. Star of Stage Stage and Screen, Lou Diamond Phillips. Phillips. That's right. It's me, star of Stage and Screen, Lou Diamond Phillips, here to help you kick your breakfast into the stratosphere with Magic Spoon Cereal. What's Magic Spoon Cereal? Are you trying to sell us heroin again, Lou Diamond Phillips? No, no, not this time. Magic Spoon Cereal has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, And only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Plus, it's only 140 calories a serving. Wow, that's a lot lower than some cereals out there. It's also gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. Wow. And we've got exciting news. Magic Spoon is relaunching the blueberry flavor. One of your favorite flavors is now back in stock after being sold out. Which means I'm back too. Benedict Benedict the the blueberry. Blueberry. That's right. Stay away from my nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nunchucks. But it's not just blueberry. You can build your own custom bundle with flavors like cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, and cinnamon. And if you're listening from Canada, Magic Spoon now ships to Canada as well. <gasps> Does that mean Bullseye Beaver is back? <laughs> <laughs> no, good question, but he's still in jail. Squirt in the nail! Just go to magicspoon.com slash gam to grab some blueberry or a custom bundle of cereal to try it today. And be sure to use our promo code GAM at checkout to save $5 off your order. This offer is now good anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, but only when you use our code at checkout. That's GAM. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, Get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash gam and use the code gam to save $5. Big thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode. Thank you, Lou Diamond Phillips, for upping our cereal game to the moon. <laughs> you got it, kids. And remember, stay away from stay- my nunchucks. <laughs> stay away from these <laughs> nunchucks, yeah. <laughs> so this is it. This is the guitar that's going to make me famous. Yes, Jimmy Laser. All who hear you play will never forget your name. All right, I could be the most famous gospel music star in history. Yes. Nice. I'm, this is going to be sorry, the best. Sorry, uh, what? Yeah. I'm going to be the greatest of all time. Very no, excited. Yeah, I heard that part. Did you say yeah. gospel music? Yeah. Like the, like the Christian yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, I play gospel music. Okay. I mean... <laughs> I don't want to shoot my own deal in the foot here, but uh, isn't it a little ironic to sell your soul to the devil to be in gospel music? Oh, I want to be the best. That's that's all I want. I just want to be the right. best in my thing. Sure. Yeah, about that, gospel music, fun fact, not good. I just gave you a magic guitar. You can be famous for, like, regular music with that I'm guitar. I'm going to be the best gospel musician, like Jim Chevalier, but, like, I have, better. I have no idea who that is. Jim See Chevalier. what I mean? I am the devil, and I've literally never heard of that. Come guy. on, be serious. He has a Canadian Grammy. Read a book. Oh, wow, a Canadian Grammy. I didn't realize that. Wow, it's a Canadian Grammy. Okay, I feel like you're making fun of me now. I am. I am making fun of you. Great. I just... Ah. Have you heard of rock and roll? Because rock and oh, roll is... Oh, yeah. I, I don't like uh, black music. Yikes. Okay. Well, you definitely belong in hell. So, yeah, here's your guitar. Go... 
crush it in Canada, get yourself one of those maple syrup Grammys. They're not maple syrup. They're, they're maple candy. Cool. Different. Waste of a guitar. And we're back. And after our very long fight, we realized that this movie's amazing. And when we left <laughs> off... Lies! <laughs> Basically, <laughs> Heath left. cried until Kara agreed. We, we were going to use it as an interstitial. Hey, we whatever it. works, That's it true. works. We stole one of her Emmys and put it inside <laughs> me. Wouldn't give it back until she agreed. <laughs> All right, so now they're about to go find the pieces of the demon guitar. Yeah, and it turns out the first one's just at the zoo. Yep. It's uh. It's, it's under a, a rock at the zoo, mm -hmm. and it's marked with a smaller rock that has an X on it that's, that nobody's moved for 27 20 years at the zoo. 27 years. But it looks like a Disney prop, like on a Disney ride. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it looks like something you would get for free because you got injured on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. <laughs> yes. Oh, but for the second piece, it's not going to be that easy. They need to get the second piece from... The bass player, which brings us to chap six, the the bass player. The bass player. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so this is where Jimmy's on the phone and it's just like a rotary phone that's nailed to the outside of a building somewhere in Toronto. Is that a thing in Toronto? Do they just have phones nailed to the side of the building? Also rotary, rotary phone? phones? Yes. Yeah. Old time. Operator, get me the bass player for the second kind of right. half of this movie. <laughs> we did an act two and stack. Right. So then the movie realizes that's dumb and doesn't make any sense. Jimmy sprints away very badly. We watch him sprint like Gary Busey down, down the alley that they're in. And he comes back seconds later with a gang of guys who have like an old boom box and they're mm -hmm. listening to the radio. Yep. Where the answer is. Mm -hmm. Because the bass player who lives under a bridge, maybe, we'll get to that in a second, <laughs> always tunes in to this same radio show that has a segment that's called the distress call of the day. What? Oh, right. On Christian radio. And he never misses it. What's his name? Never misses it. Right. Righty. Bass player never. Righty. Exactly. Righty. <laughs> never misses it. Which is weird because throughout this movie, they don't realize that guitars and bass guitars are held specifically one way. Like most people are righty. So the <laughs> neck goes to the left, but they keep holding it upside down and backwards throughout the movie <laughs> at different times. Pretty they fantastic. Forget. <laughs> One of the great ending of the movie, he raises his hand up, just hits the back of the guitar. Shit. That, oh. <laughs> None of it. Oh. <laughs> this is also where he and Smoothie talk about his cigarette that says goodbye. It's his last cigarette. Will that ever matter to the movie? No, the fuck it won't. But they spend about 11 <laughs> minutes on it. So we're going to make you at least hear us sum it up in a <laughs> sentence or two. <gasps> okay, but this brings us to the the baby thing. Oh, yeah. That I oh. have no idea what was happening here. Okay. So here's what happens canonically in the movie. I'm going <laughs> to save y'all at home some time. Okay. Righty hears the distress call that they called into the Christian radio station. And in order to reconnect with his friend, he dresses a boom box up as a crying baby. He wraps it in a blanket. He puts it in a pram, what? which he happens to have, and then runs away with it counting on Jimmy Laser to chase him to the bridge that he lives under so that he can reveal it was a boombox and he's been his old friend all along. Okay. <laughs> and that works. That plan yeah. works because Flawlessly. Jimmy starts chasing a guy running with a pram and a baby inside and then finds out it's his friend Righty. And to be clear, if you're from anywhere else in the country that's not where these guys are from, a pram is a stroller. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that we're Victorian time travelers, Kara Santa Maria. We do our best to cover it up. Okay, in fairness, the the, the prop is a Victorian pram. Yeah, it's reason. actually, you're right. It's got like the little canopy over the yeah. top. It's not like it's made by fucking Greco. <laughs> and like if there were a baby in there, it would have literally bounced out at one point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the pretense that there is a baby in here makes this scene terrifying because they are taking hard corners with this thing, my friends. Oh, yeah. They're like, they're taking like those, what are they called? Like the road humps. Yep. 
Oh, they're like, drifting they're to- with a oh, pram. You beat me yeah. to it. I was going to say they Tokyo drift with the baby. They Tokyo drift a pram. <laughs> if you're Tokyo drifting and chasing a guy who's running with a baby in a stroller, you need to examine your whole situation. <laughs> they don't. They're just like, this all makes sense. I should be chasing this baby for some reason. And then it turns out it all worked out because Wrighty's plan made sense and they found him. Right. Ugh. And they're under a bridge now where he lives. Right. Well, so that's the thing. He says, like, Wrighty, how long have you been homeless? And Rhodey's like, I'm not homeless. I live under a bridge. And there's an awkward pause while everyone in the movie's like, come on, man. You know that means homeless. Yeah. Don't Wrighty. <laughs> yeah. But then he says, Wrighty, it's time to feed the baby, which I really wanted to be code, code for gay sex. <laughs> What, 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 is what it was it for? code for? Thanks. It's yeah. code for I need my piece of my magical guitar back. The only thing it makes less sense then than gay sex. So to be clear, once again, because I feel like nobody who's listening to us right now saw this movie. So they're like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> the purpose now is that Jimmy Laser, who is a 27-year-old zombie demon, yep. yes. has decided that he needs to put together his guitar that he took in pieces mm-hmm. whenever mm-hmm. that happened. Right. Put it back together and bring it back to Satan for for reasons. Ye- no, yeah. he's actually got to put it back together and play it at the moose or Satan will force choke him with his own hand. Oh. Satan wants him to bring it back to him, but okay. he's got a different plan. Right. He's going to go to the moose. But he's like, no, I'm going to play it at the moose for alternate reasons. Alternate reasons, yes. <laughs> to okay. win the movie. Because my manager had a dream that I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Johnny Cash something, something. My manager, who can raise the dead, yeah. dreamed that I did. Yes. Right. So Wrighty has the code in his head for where the next piece of the guitar is but he forgot the code on purpose for safety. Like this is like a, oh. like an extra layer of like two factor authentication happening here. I think this is supposed to be comic relief. Yes. This is supposed to be quirky <laughs> and funny. Okay. And it's, it's not, it's like, it's just sad. It's like the next level below dad joke. Yeah. Right. Like instead of bad groany puns, it's just like, Oh, I would have remembered, but then I forgot. Huh? Huh? Oh, that, that's it? That's it. Yeah. That's my joke. Okay. It's sad. He's like, I'm mentally ill. And then they're all <laughs> righty. Yeah. Right. That's true. They will they will treat his apparent mental illness as a character quirk until yeah. about four seconds from now when they will entirely forget it as a plot point for the rest of the movie. You're right. And then he's just completely level the rest of the film. <laughs> yeah. Which brings us to chapter seven, the Forbidden Fortress, which is Righty's home. Now. Podcast listener, I know what you're thinking. Oh, I was commuting and I must have blacked out for the 20 minutes where Wrighty was homeless and then didn't have a home. No, no, no. This is the continuity of the movie. The rest of this scene will take place inside the homeless character's home. Wait, I, th- I thought he's divorced and this is the home of his ex-wife. Oh, that's clearly what it is. Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what yeah. it is. The Forbidden Fortress is the place we shall not go because the evil ex-wife lives there and she's going to make me feel bad right. about the fact that I, I don't know, am mentally ill and li- live under a bridge. Yeah. But she doesn't do anything evil. She just gives them the things they ask for. No, she's like a totally normal person. She just seems slightly miffed. Yeah, yeah it's just, that's why it's sexist. Okay. She also feeds them uh, hard-boiled eggs and whipped cream. Oh, yeah. this she is... invites them in. What was that? Is this a Canadian thing? Have yeah? I I wasn't. Sure. I don't care what it's from. That's fantastic. No, it's uh, been fucking disgusting. No. Is what it is. You wouldn't. You you don't right now want a hard-boiled uh, egg and uh, whipped cream. You're saying so you wouldn't little. have that right now. So I want that <laughs> negative. What is the opposite of want? I dis- let me see. That's Do Canadians crazy. eat eggs with? Whipped cream. <laughs> There's no way they do. Google. There's That's n- canon. That's a Canadian thing. We would know that. <laughs> Look, I know two things about Canadians. One, they are polite. Two, they never use condoms. If they ate <laughs> boiled eggs with whipped cream, I would have heard about it. Right. It would be like ketchup flavored chips, milk in a bag. Absolutely. It would be all I the things yeah. we know. They have like aerosolized maple syrup, whipped cream, and they have hard boiled eggs and they put them together. It's like a no. standard thing. Maybe no, like, it's just it's, like snow and they drizzle it. It's, it's a just thing they them do. trying to do something quirky in the movie, but they shoot what felt like hours of footage of this 
55 year old man just like slowly biting into this sugar covered eggs truly revolting it looks Re amazing revolting okay so the ex-wife brings over 42 reels of something footage to tape of the old band's music i think yeah i think it's the old band's music because he's like i buried it in the old music yeah right and yeah so okay Again, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm certain I'm wrong. But what I think happened here is they have all this old bootleg music of their shitty concerts and coded into the music was backwards talking that describes the location of the next piece of the guitar. Yes. Yeah, but we don't know that yet because first, like none of us know that. All we know is somewhere in these tapes, there's a clue. Right. And so then they play them all because it's like 37 hours later. <laughs> yep. And then they finally found it either first or last. The movie's not clear whether it's the first tape they put in or the last tape they put in. But they put the tape in and it plays some backward thing. And then someone's like, oh, man, if only we had a way to play backwards language forward. And Jimmy Laser just pulls a backwards player recording mic out of his pocket. He's like, you mean like this? <laughs> Was that a comedy beat or were they just like, well, I, unless he's got one in his pocket, we can't do the movie. <laughs> I think that's what they're saying. I think that was real. I think they were like, yeah. So musicians would be carrying things that go backwards and forwards, obviously, for codes. And this is what they have. And Wrighty just happens to speak backwards language. Ease. Yes. Ease. Easily. Yeah. So he repeats the backwards ease that he heard on the tape into the little handheld backwards and forwards device that Jimmy Laser just happens to have on him. This movie's amazing. Are you kidding? Ooh, is this that movie a thing? Is... is that a thing? It's a pen. It was a pen. It looked like just a pen with a light on it, but for whatever reason, it it recorded and then you could play it backward. Yeah, it looks like something they got from a bank for opening a checking account. Yeah, that's all it was. <laughs> Does that thing exist? Oh, man. I'm sure, but it's definitely not that pen they used for a prop in this movie. <laughs> TD Bank would make so much more money if they gave pens oh, that played backwards reverse. music for codes. Absolutely. But then <laughs> the code turns out to be Red, Red, you gave it to Red, his brother. Wait, you could hear that? You could understand that. <laughs> well, yeah, they, when they played it forward, I could understand it on the second viewing. Wait, really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I didn't get that at all. All I got was blah, 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 blah. And then he gets your brother. <laughs> but, like, but here's what's so crazy. <laughs> that means this is the plot of the movie. Righty, who is homeless and lives under a bridge, needed to forget where he put the second piece of the guitar. And the thing he needed to forget is, I gave it to my brother. <laughs> <laughs> he needed, again, 37 hours of real footage and a backwards forwards clue to remember I gave it to my brother, the only other person I know in the world besides my ex-wife. Yeah, he literally needed two-factor authentication <laughs> to figure this out. <laughs> and that's going to bring us to chapter eight, Red. <laughs> okay, so his name is Red and he was in the band. Yes. I did not get any of this. He was the drummer of the band. <laughs> From my viewing. He's Righty's brother. Yeah. Yeah. I just got that he was his brother and he was he was a hard dude. Yes, he's he's the drummer. And when Jimmy abandoned them before their big gig, he made a vow to murder Jimmy on sight. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. wrote in my notes, that seems extreme for a band breaking up, right? I mean, well, and especially because when we meet Red, he's at like a meeting and it's like a meeting of ex gospel singers or something. It's a it's an anti atheist addiction it's an atheist addiction support group yep. i'm pretty sure <laughs> it's an anti-gospel music recovery group people who are recovering atheists are here recovering no, recovering christians. gospel oh yeah, re they're yes recovering sorry christians. they're recovering christians they're vehemently atheist here yes yeah and they're all like bikers too they're all, i think they look like there was a dolly parton convention and <laughs> yes. also the Sturgis motorcycle rally that gave a third of the country COVID. <laughs> like they smashed together inside the Haldron particle accelerator. And that this meeting is what came out. Oh, it's so good. Bad, bad, bad. Oh, it's bad. This scene's amazing. You got to admit this scene is crazy, ridiculous, amazing. No. So <laughs> they show up at this, this, 
<laughs> support group for atheists trying to recover from religion, but it's a terrible thing. And we, we learn a couple of the rules here. They zoom in on like the rule book of this anti-gospel support group. Rule number 12, I am atheist numero uno, <laughs> which is weird phrasing, but okay, they're super atheists. Also, the atheist. way you pronounce the word numero is really weird to numero, <laughs> numero. Numero, numero uno, Spanish. I know Spanish. And numero. <laughs> rule number 13, remove all religious tattoos or else. Yeah, how do you remove a yeah. tattoo? Like, well... Great question. Bonus Glad you rule. Asked Cara Santa Maria. Bonus rule uh, clarifies. Great question. That's why they have the bonus rule right there after it. Bonus rule: always bring your drill. Oh and yeah. And that's that's literal. They all brought power drills just in case they need to to drill off a religious tattoo, <laughs> like Again. drill someone's arm off if they didn't remove the religious Keith, tattoo. Keith, this does not in any way answer my question. <laughs> That is a great question. No, it doesn't, but... That's what the movie does. <laughs> neither does anything else. Wouldn't you prefer like a yeah. box cutter over a drill? Well, like, less exciting. Oh, look, everybody. Skin Books Lady wants the really specific information <laughs> on how to remove a tattoo. I wonder why. No! <laughs> this is why you can't come to a live show. Because you'll kill someone. <laughs> but hanging out with Steve Novella too much. It's bad, you guys. This is really bad. <laughs> I'm revealing myself little by little. <laughs> okay, so that um, I didn't like exaggerate there. Nope. This group realizes that Red still has a religious tattoo. Oh, a they cross. all take out their drill. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's got a cross. Bad. They all take out their drills. They start to hold him down to drill his arm off, or the part of his arm that has the tattoo for atheism. I no idea that's what was happening. Yeah, that's what's happening. I, I think I got this right. I think this might be the point where I was like, I have to go to sleep. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> that was a yeah. that was a good move. Okay, so that's happening. So Jimmy sees that that's happening. He runs upstairs where he's kept a chainsaw in a box just for this, in case this was going to happen. He comes back downstairs with a chainsaw. But he's never been here before, Thank right? Thank you. Thank you, Kara. The <laughs> plot of this movie... Well, to put the chainsaw, he obviously placed the chainsaw at some point. <laughs> the plot of this movie is that Jimmy has emergency chainsaws placed randomly around the country. Around and Toronto. <laughs> yes. And happens to have one in the attic of the building where they hold this anti-gospel recovery group meeting. That is correct. <sighs> and then, of course... <laughs> He says the thing that takes all atheists down, you say you're atheists, but you're afraid of the fires of hell. And one of the atheists says, no, we're not. Kara's dad. <laughs> to, which, <laughs> to which he replies, then why are you wearing asbestos underpants? Oh, yeah. What? That was weird. Was this a Mormon reference? No. no we don't. Like, they wear magic underpants, but not asbestos underpants. Are they not asbestos? No, they're not made out of asbestos. Well, I thought they were asbestos. We, I think they're Kevlar and asbestos. We would have a... a rash of like Mormon mesothelioma cases. <laughs> it's okay. not a thing. Graphene infused. There we Kevlar. go. Kevlar. Yeah. Uh, asbestos. That's I'm that, I'm pretty sure like that's how Mormon Mormonism works. Superhero. Yep. I don't mean uniform. to correct you on the air. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think this is supposed to be like a gotcha against like, oh, atheists say they don't believe in hell, but we and Kara's dad know that you secretly do, and that's why you're wearing underwear that would protect you from fire if you got to go to hell in the underwear you were wearing when you died. And only that yeah. part of your body right. would right. be protected. You're so in you a would... lake of fire, and your like, just crotch area is protected by <laughs> castos. So basically, hell is just a bunch of charred. Corpses Charred with crotches. intact penises. Yep. <laughs> I would have found a way to make that work, though, right? I'm boiling in a lake of fire and I'm turning on the demon. My dick feels great. I can't. My dick, whatever you're doing, all the other areas, my dick feels awesome. <laughs> Amazing. I'm literally like imagining in my head my copy of Dante's Inferno with the old etchings, <laughs> and it's just, it's just these charred bodies with just like like epic penis. <laughs> oh, I thought it was just like a chubby me floating in the middle of like medieval art forms, like flipping off a demon. 
<laughs> with my gloriously intact oh my butt. Oh god, hell sounds insane. <laughs> hell sounds insane. <laughs> now I know what to wear to the next live show. So there so you go. So much dick. <laughs> oh, but they save Red. <laughs> the point is they have saved Red. And now they're going to try to convince him to go back to gospel music. But he doesn't want to. Right. He's mostly just mad about the name thing. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't want to go back to the band. Like, Lazarus, it's a stupid name. You don't even say it, right? It's Lazarus. It's supposed to be a, a reference to Lazarus. We don't even say it. We say Lazarus. This is dumb. Yep. Literally, that is what happens. He's like, I need those magic guitar parts. Oh, we forgot to mention this. Red is wearing the pickups for the magic Satan guitar as a bracelet. That's piece number two. Oh, right. Back to the plot. Yeah. Back in, to the plot. In order yeah. for him to give them back to Jimmy, Jimmy has to agree to change the name of the band to Laser Dash Us. Or to Lazarus. Oh, right. And they even close the scene with, do you still say it the same? And then they don't answer that, <laughs> that question. Was, I laughed a lot from <laughs> Me that. Me too. Because righty out of nowhere is like, okay, we're going back to Laser Us. Or laser, how do we pronounce it? <laughs> and then they just end scene. Yep. <laughs> Which brings us to chapter nine, the final piece. No, but we're nowhere near the final anything at no. this point. <laughs> we are not near the end of the movie, but we are at the final piece, apparently. <laughs> it feels like you'd break your demon guitar into, I don't know, a little bit more than three pieces if you're worried you you're doing like two-factor authentication on stuff. Like maybe break it into like, I don't know, 27 pieces. Right. There you go. Right. Yeah. No. Agree. This is where the captions let us know that Paul McCartney died at 27. Nope. Did not happen. Did not happen. Was that supposed to be? Did he in the Paul is dead when you play it backwards thing? Did that happen when he was 27? I don't know. Is this like a conspiracy theory that I don't know about? Yeah. There, isn't well, there the that Beatles the record like that you play weird... backwards that said Paul is dead? Paul yeah. Is dead. They, Remember yeah, when you were in the Paul's Beatles? Paul's not dead. <laughs> yeah. They did a weird joke about it and then it didn't go over well. And then they were like, we're just like Jesus in the 60s. They're like, we are not ready for this. And he was like, oh, shit. Sorry. Jesus was great. Right, but like, and then clearly, he had no shoes when he was walking across Abbey Road, and it was like a thing. Clearly, that was a joke, right? Yeah, he wasn't actually dead. <laughs> no, like I've seen him. Lot, was a like I've seen, like he exists. He's around. You can go to yeah, his concerts. Like, Noah's yeah. met him. <laughs> but this is what's crazy. Okay, now at this point in the movie, Guitar Hunter, the guy who had him do the weird horse game with guitar, he now has the handle of the guitar and the pickups because Smoothie who knows that she is Jimmy Laser's daughter, stole them and has brought them to the devil because she will die, and I assume go to hell, on her 27th birthday, which is days or hours or minutes away, depending on how the timeline of this movie works. It's an hour away because the demon is talking to her. He's like, okay, thanks for the uh, you know guitar neck and the pickups. You're going to turn 27 in one hour and he... He flips a, an hourglass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is an hourglass. And also there's something about these blue shoes. Like she was wearing blue chucks the whole movie after he like sexy took off her red shoes. Right. She found some random blue chucks somewhere and he's like, nice shoes. And I'm like, is she wearing his shoes? I don't understand. There's like weird subtext that they didn't ever <laughs> Very expound on. And then she like disappears to go back to the devil, but she leaves the blue shoes so that he can like find them to know that she like, stole his shit and left. Right. And is the Blue Rocks Blue Shoes thing some sort of reference? Ooh. Oh, I think it is. Smart. Look that at you. That makes sense because no, but blue it's just and literally blue. the two things are blue. I didn't Two put things are blue. That's <laughs> that's the most way this more gonna that's give connecting us. Yeah. the dots better than this movie's ever done. <laughs> yeah. This is oh, the best God. we're going to get. You're you're putting it together. Oh, my so God. so he's like, "Oh man, I've lost my guitar. Like our plan is ruined." So now we're going to cut to 27 years ago and we're going to find out why he decided to run away from music and not use his magic guitar and abandon his family. <laughs> and why? Because he flipped a coin and it came up. Flipped a coin. White cross. So he <laughs> they do this coin flip and they show us a cross mm -hmm. and then they give us the flashback to 27 years ago. He flipped a coin to decide I'm going to run away from music in my family because he got upside down cross. Okay. Which is, that's a bad coin flip that's system. That's a terrible system. I feel like that's <laughs> real easy to mix up. No? Very easy and also not <laughs> coin dependent. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he gets the, in his head, upside down cross and then immediately 
goes apparently to the mother of his child, yes. the mother of Smoothie, and he's like, yeah, so I flipped a coin and I got upside down cross. I have to leave forever. <laughs> and she's like, you sure you didn't look at it backwards? Or maybe, <laughs> maybe that's not the best coin system? He abandons his child, takes the guitar apart, never plays it or uses it, and then we must assume sits in a horse trailer for 27 years waiting for freedom to come start the movie. Okay. I think that's all that. Yes. I think that's the <laughs> plot of the movie here. Must be. Must be the plot of the movie. Okay. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> yeah. But it gets worse because now we cut back to the present and who's there? Smoothie. Wait, I thought Smoothie was a bad guy. No, because Freedom, remember Freedom, the band manager, he's just traded himself for Smoothie to the devil. Right. Okay. That did happen. And I feel like I knew that. Yes. So Freedom does the ultimate sacrifice. Because again, remember, not only is Freedom the band manager and Jimmy Laser's best friend, but he's also like a cool guy preacher. Yes. And so like the preacher was willing to sell himself to the devil to save his friend Jimmy. Not his friend Jimmy. His friend Jimmy's daughter, right, who, right, right. who just a scene ago was on the devil's side. Right, but I think that was a fake out. Yeah, wasn't she faking out the devil and yeah, doing that was the a fake thing out. with the shoes as like a, a backup plan to make it look like she was with the devil? Yeah, but, that's but absolutely clue him what happened. In with the shoes? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a fake out. And also remember what we're leaving out here is that the pickups aren't the real pickups. They're not? No. No. Yeah. He exactly. holds on. The red holds on to the real pickups and gives him the fake pickups. So it's a double fake out. It is. So she takes the wrong pickups to the devil. But I think somehow she's supposed to know that. Why would she know that? I don't know, but. <laughs> this is such a good movie. This, this is such, such a good, good movie, movie, guys. It made sense in my head because she was always intending to come back to her Love interest father. Okay. Well, if this is confusing, <laughs> I think we can all agree that it'd be clarified if a Johnny Cash impersonator <laughs> were to now have a three minute conversation with our protagonist. Yeah, that's what we get. Yeah. That's what we get. A Johnny Cash impersonator shows up and is like, you got to go to the moose. Also, he's bad. Like, he's my level of Johnny Cash impersonation. Oh, I thought his, his accent was pretty good. <laughs> I. Mm, Ah. It kind of sounds like Johnny Cash. Am I nailing it? No. I kind of sound like Johnny Cash. No. I am too. <laughs> okay. Wrong. And also, like, he clearly doesn't really look like Johnny Cash, which is why they put him in the dark. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's like <laughs> right. in the rafters for yeah. some reason. Like, he's <laughs> super far away because they didn't want to show him. Yeah. And the first thing he says to Jimmy is that don't smoke, which is a weird hypocrisy for a guy who injected methamphetamines into his penis. Okay, Fair so enough. again, there's a weird anti-smoking PSA running Very throughout this whole much. movie. Yes. <laughs> because <laughs> multiple times over, he almost smokes his last cigarette, which says goodbye on it, which the daughter rips in half, which he tapes back together. And he's just constantly like fingering a cigarette just or like constantly. lipping a cigarette, but yeah. never actually lights it. The whole movie. I was present for no illusion quitting cigarettes. And this is now the most unpleasant quitting of cigarettes I have witnessed in this movie. <laughs> and I watched Noah quit. Oh, God. If, if anybody quitting cigarettes was trying to watch this movie, they would have been like, fuck, are you kidding me? Now he's <laughs> he's running the cigarette lovingly along the side of no, his yeah. lip. Come on. Clearly, this guy is not trying to quit. All, you know, anybody who has ever struggled with cigarettes, I quit cigarettes. Oh, my God. When I was 27. <gasps> what? Are you technically alive? Live? Last year? <laughs> oh, you guys are so sweet. Last yeah. year. No, yeah, I quit I quit smoking cigarettes 10 years ago and I could not be around them. This guy isn't trying to quit. This guy is like, he's like flaunting that he's he doesn't need cigarettes. That's what he's doing in this movie. <laughs> right. He's like, I can lick it and not even smoke it. Why do we lick it? Honestly, if this movie had been a breakup makeup, like before dawn kind of love story between this guy and a cigarette, I would have liked it way more. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, because that's the thing, too. What is the cigarette plot? And why is it the most salient part of the whole film? Never matters. <laughs> Never. Not why. <once. laughs> I was trying to tie it in and I have but, no idea. I have but no Johnny idea. Cash tells him to go to the moose. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to go to the moose. Yeah. So, okay. Johnny Cash just assured us that the plot makes some sense. Don't worry. It's going to happen. But first, we're going to take one more quick break. 
And then we'll be back for the the rest of whatever this is. <laughs> And I want to thank my beautiful wife, Anna, darling, since the very beginning no, of this no, no, thing. No, no, dude, what are you doing? Everybody knows that spouses go at the end of the speech. No, because I'm... Heath, Eli, what are you doing? Put down my Emmys. Oh, but we need them. What could you possibly need with my Emmys? Oh, we're practicing for winning awards and stuff because of our new sponsor, Masterclass. What's Masterclass? Seriously? Come Seriously? on! I know, but you guys put the spreadsheet on Google Docs and now I'm beating Marsh for seconds. Fine, 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 fine. Fine, that's fair. With Masterclass... You can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to cook from Gordon Ramsay, improve your chess game with Gary Kasparov, or even learn magic from Penn and Teller. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. Yeah, I actually had a membership with Masterclass before they were a sponsor. I signed up for Steve Martin's class on comedy, and I stayed for the great acting courses, the mindfulness stuff, and... I've even done some of the cooking courses. It's beautifully shot and the courses are really excellent. Oh, how's the Penn and Teller one on magic? They give away a trick you've been doing for like eight years. Are you mad yes, about that? Yes, they do, Heath. Thank you for telling everyone that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a very good class. They all are. <laughs> so we highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And as a God Awful Movies listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Just go to masterclass.com slash awful. That's masterclass.com slash awful for 15% off masterclass. Man, that does sound good. You guys might really end up with some Emmys of your own after all. You really think so? No, no, give those back. Whatever, I don't want to share an Emmy with Linda Burns anyway. Stupid. Nobody talks about Linda Burns like that. hi -ya! I know you're back on TV again, but it's fun that you got weird with us during COVID. Yeah, thank God nobody listens to podcasts. Right, right. Nobody listens to podcasts. Jimmy. Jimmy Laser. You're you're the man in black, right? Yep. Legally, we can say that. Uh, so what do I do, Johnny Cash? Yeah, up, 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 up. Man in black. I, okay. Uh, what do I do, man in black? How do I save my daughter? You've got to go to the 7-Eleven. The 7-Eleven? What's the 7-Eleven? There's a wise man there. You must meet him. And bring me back what he gives you. Sorry, um, I bring it back to you. Yep. I get. Yep. I, I need it. Don't, don't tell June though. What? Journey? Are you trying to score even as a ghost? Damn it, June! I'm doing a magic wisdom thing. Stop it! You're interrupting me. Near, near, you're not. You're trying to score. Don't listen to her. Go get the powder from the wise man and bring wait, it back wait, to me. Wait, it's a powder. Yeah, it's a magic music powder. I'm going to give it to you. You bring that back her, I'm going to flush it down the toilet. Damn it, Junebug. Okay, I'm going to go. And we're back. When we left off, Jimmy Laser was about to get the next piece of the guitar at a third hiding place called <laughs> Hiding Place Number Three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is Chapter 10, The Man in Black Has Spoken, which means we better wrap this movie up soon. <laughs> Oh, but no, because there's still like 40 minutes left at this point. Yeah. So the, the daughter comes in and she's going to explain the plot of the movie. She's like, yeah, so the third part of the guitar is just here, I guess. Oh, yeah. They just find that one really fast. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> it's just where the ending of the movie is. <laughs> and then, okay. Again, this only makes sense if everyone involved in this movie can't play the guitar and no one wanted to tell anyone else in the movie. There will be about five minutes of the remaining scenes of this movie where they will have a fight about whether or not they should practice before the big concert, which will <laughs> never be relevant to the plot of the movie. It will never make any sense unless this actor can't play guitar and he's playing chicken That's with the other actor. 100% what happened. Well, clearly he can't play guitar. <laughs> he cannot. He doesn't even know how to hold it correctly. No. Right. But also isn't part of the plot that if he plays the devil guitar, something bad will happen. Oh, maybe that. Okay. Maybe that's I think that's the main more. plot point here is that he can't play the guitar. Seems like they could just practice with a different guitar for the rehearsal. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. You're, you're right about that. That That is a major hole in a major plot point that I did not think about until now. Got a relationship at Guitar Center. Just get a regular one. But they have this whole standoff scene where Red, the one who they found in the atheist gospel meeting thing, holds a baseball bat up to his head. And counts to three. 
Yeah. So he counts down from five. Thank five, you. Right. Yeah, counts five. down from five. And he's like, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> and then he just goes like, bang, you're dead. And then quits the band. <laughs> and, and Jimmy's like, okay, uh, first of all, why does everybody keep, uh, you know, stashes of weapons for situations <laughs> like this? <laughs> like my chainsaw thing made a little bit more sense than your baseball bat. I got to be honest. Also, did you just count down from five while holding the baseball bat and then finger guns me yep. <laughs> to death? Yeah, and like, where was the baseball bat when he was finger gunning him? Up, up to, to his, his neck. neck. He's holding it up to his neck. Oh, he was. You're right. He was yeah, still the, holding it there. The awkward, the wide shot would have been very awkward because he's got the hand on one side and the bat on the other. But the movie, I think, wants us to think this is a big moment. It's like, no, the band is breaking. The band got back together Two and a half scenes ago, we've <laughs> never heard them play. We don't care about any of the characters. So now Smoothie comes back in and she's like, hey, remember these shoes? And he's like, yeah, I remember them. You were in a demon house and I, I took off your demon shoes. And she's like, yeah, they're not demon shoes. And he's like, oh. And she's like, yep. So what are we doing? <laughs> the shoes. And then that's it. That's just That's it. why. Why did that conversation? Yeah, that didn't get us anywhere, guys. Uh, you want to just fucking practice? Because I feel like you're going to bomb your set. We watch as part of this movie a failed conversation starter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. That's that's what it is, though. That's yeah. all that happens. Like, we're not just kidding. She's yeah. like, here's some red shoes that you took off of me with your circle scarf sexily, <laughs> even though I'm your daughter, <laughs> because they were cursed, but they're not cursed. Let's get a cheeseburger. That's literally, yeah. she's like, I guess, I don't know what to make of that. And he's like, here, do you want to play the guitar? And she plays the guitar for a second. And she turns 27. <laughs> yeah. We actually, this is the only guitar we really hear ever played. And it's not plugged in. No. She's, she's got an electric guitar. And we hear very clearly an acoustic guitar being played. Also, he's doing this weird thing where he like he's like, you strum and I'll move the capo up and down the neck, but he's not pushing on it hard enough. No. So it's just setting on top of the strings, <laughs> which would make it sound like this. Thunk. Like yeah. that's what that sound makes <laughs> when you don't push on the strings. Does not know how to play the guitar. So he's just gently stroking the capo up and down <laughs> the neck of the guitar while his daughter an actress who doesn't know how to play the guitar is strumming by like gently waving her hand above the stomach of the guitar. And they're showing like extreme tight shots of this. Like we're like, they're like, we know what we're doing. You know? <laughs> right. like, this, what? this movie is chicken that we don't know how to play a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one involved in the production or the viewing of this film has ever seen a guitar played or played a guitar. No. Which clearly is like pretty amazing odds considering that they hired everybody out of a grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd think that at least one person would know how to play guitar. It's weird. So now we're going to watch the guitar execution of freedom. Right. Oh, wait. Is this the cigarette thing? This is the cig... No, this is... No, sorry. Oh. This is before that. Okay. This is where freedom's going to get power corded to death. Oh. <laughs> That execution of freedom. I get it. I thought you were doing a weird play on words. <laughs> you mean of the actual character of named the freedom. The actual character <laughs> named freedom. So before he does, think about how fucking stupid this movie is. <laughs> yes. Jimmy, who is just handed the magic fucking guitar to his daughter lover in the <laughs> barn where he was keeping the three pieces of his magic guitar, just handed to her seconds ago. He goes out to the minivan, the mom van, mm -hmm. and looks inside his guitar case and says, the guitar is gone. Right. Really? That happened? Yes. Yeah, the guitar is gone. And now <laughs> Satan and the leather cowboy demon gang has the guitar somehow and they have freedom. Yes. What? So did they just accidentally skip a scene? They, yes. The, yes, they, they actually did. You know how did. sometimes like you're binging a TV show? This has happened to you guys before, right? Where you binge a TV show and then you start the next episode and they do the Last time previously on. on. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, wait, did I like 
not watch that episode? Okay. Like, was I half asleep? Because I don't remember any of this. Yes, that happened. The movie forgets that they didn't put the scene where Freedom <laughs> gets abducted by the demons. Yep. And then they're like, oh shit, we didn't do that. And they give us like a two second flashback. They're like, so yeah, here's, here's Freedom getting abducted by the demons. He's back now. They got the guitar. All right, yeah, and we're back in the room. And now we're back. <laughs> that, that's what happens in the movie. They march Freedom out of the, the truck that they have and power cord him to death and he falls and disappears first they put up a rolled up blindfold on him which they can't bother to straighten perhaps the ugliest and weirdest part of the movie is this <laughs> blindfold that they can barely get over this actor's head one of his eyes is uncovered and they're like it's, it's fine it's fine the movie's almost over and then the guitar hunter from earlier in the movie the guy who made him play guitar horse in front of the electric thing hits a power cord and the power cord kills freedom Yep. But it doesn't really kill him. It like vanishes him. Yeah. Because his body's not there. Obi-Wan Kenobi's him. His clothes are still there, but maybe his asbestos underwear went with him down to hell. (laughs) That's true. And and meanwhile, Jimmy Laser, a.k.a. Jonah Merriweather, is watching from inside the van for some reason. And he puts his hand up. You know that scene in Titanic? Yes. He does like the (laughs) handprint scene. It's 100% the handprint scene from Titanic. Yeah, and they do like an intense like macro shot of it as if we're supposed to feel anything, but anything. we don't care about any of these characters because they have zero character There's development. There's no development. We don't <laughs> care about their relationship. We haven't seen the preach. We haven't seen freedom for five scenes. Five <laughs> scenes. Hold on. Didn't so Smoothie is not dead here, even though she just had her 27th birthday. Is that because freedom like Took the bullet for her? Yeah. Yeah, he did a tradesies. Oh, okay. It's all, the devil loves tradesies. (laughs) He's like, the devil's like Freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. (laughs) (laughs) So he sacrifices himself. The devil's like that guy who like starts with a paperclip and ends up with a house. Yeah. You know that? <laughs> like, like trades it for something slightly better and just keeps going. I would totally watch the devil's TikTok. If, this, if Satan, if you're listening yeah. and you start a TikTok... You've got a follower. <laughs> so yeah, then there's a, a totally meaningless scene where the daughter smoothie is like, don't worry, freedom is back with Johnny Cash now. Right. Like, so that means they're all in hell. <laughs> it's unclear. But they, <laughs> but they have this amazing moment. The only reason I bring up this scene is because Jimmy Laser turns to her and he's like, this place is stupid. This movie is stupid. This movie has no plot. <laughs> You're right. Well, now they go to the moose because that was the plot that they remembered here. Right. Yeah, they're going to the moose. That's the whole point. Let's get to the moose. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of like, have you guys ever done like really hard drugs? And when you're on really hard (laughs) drugs, the only thing that you can do is make sure you have a mission. And it doesn't matter how stupid (laughs) the mission is, but like you keep going back. It's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. Gotta get these lucky charms. Yeah. All night. Yeah. Yeah, That's what this movie is. Yeah. And then the guy at the theater at the Dark Knight told me I couldn't bring a box of lucky charms into the movie theater. And I was so sad about it. (laughs) I didn't have thrown a Gray's papaya a lot of the time. That's a great place. In these moments. So you guys have epic. Like I had some intense experiences at raves where it was literally just getting from where we were like sitting or dancing to the bathroom. (laughs) This was like an all night event. (laughs) Is figuring out how to pee. You got different like components to the mission and you're giving yourself titles. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And you've got to step over the guy. It's amazing. Still more interesting than the plot of this movie. Absolutely. So they get to the moose chapter 12 Laser man come forth. And for some reason, even though this hasn't been announced anywhere and there are only four characters in the movie, there is now a crowd of people there chanting, find Jimmy, find Jimmy. Was that what they were saying? Yeah, find Jim. But wasn't that a flashback or a flash forward? I, no, I didn't it's, know it's real time. It's real time. when anything happened in this scene. This is at the moose now. No, and we know that because I think they put out a flyer. Oh, they did? Did I miss a flyering scene? Yeah, I think they put out a flyer way earlier that said they were going to play. It was a reunion tour at the Moose of La- Laser Us Lazarus, and they're going to go to Moose. But here's the thing. The Moose is just a parking lot? Yeah, it's it's closed now. 
No, but it's not even just closed. It doesn't, the building doesn't exist. It's now literally a parking lot. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Like there's just, they're like, this is where the moose was. And it's like, clearly it's not because this is not a new parking lot. Right. Like, I think you guys just went to the wrong streets. (laughs) <laughs> like, that would have been that would have been hilarious if they're like all right pull up pull up the maps again i think we're it's back yeah. it's back this way so now we're going to flash back to the previous evening but maybe concurrent with the timeline where he burns the satan guitar right so this is i think the entire point of the cigarette but it makes no sense so the whole time he's like lip fucking this cigarette. Yep. And then finally he's crouched down with the with the guitar in front of him in like a field and he continues to lip fuck the cigarette, lights his last match for some reason, and then somehow catches an entire guitar on fire with one <laughs> match, which sounds Impressive. really hard to do. Well, it is yeah. a Satan guitar. It's very fire attractant. <laughs> it's very and then he walks away from it and I'm sitting here in Southern California being like, "Bro, <laughs> only you can prevent forest fires." It's okay, it's not a gender revealed guitar, so it's probably yeah. fine. <laughs> I really wanted his one last match to just blow out and delay the big ending and he has to just go, go like go to a convenience store, <laughs> goes to a hotel. Oh, I wanted this movie to legit be like the the mist. Ooh. Where it's just garbage the whole time, and then the ending is so epic that I'm like, I loved it. I don't. I have nothing bad to say about this film. There you go. It was. There not. you go. I wanted this movie to be like The Mist, in that I wanted to kill myself before it was over, <laughs> and everyone else in the car with me. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. They, they end up all dying to a power cord that Jimmy plays. <laughs> Kids, lime your heads up against this amp. But then. So he burned the guitar. He walks dramatically away from it and lights Kara's house on fire. Yes. But then he opens a piece of paper that he has never had, that we never saw him pick up, that we never saw anyone write, that says, the cursed is broken, JC. That's a note from Jesus? Did Jesus say that? Was he in on this? (laughs) I mean, that's JC, right? Can we agree that JC is Jesus Christ? JC is Jesus Christ, I feel like it's got to be Jesus Christ. He's the one who, in the Bible, resurrected Lazarus. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a curse, though. No. If I remember correctly. Yeah, was Satan in that story at all? He just went to some dude's house and was like, oh, guy's been dead for four days. I got this. And okay, he's good. And he also put like really expensive, like, cream from Sephora all over somebody's foot or something and waste it and got yelled at. That That's the whole story that I remember from Lazarus. Maybe the curse was Jimmy's... I'm going to go deep here. Maybe the curse was Jimmy's quest for fame. And in finding Jesus, the curse was broken? Uh, what? Maybe? I'm reaching. I'm admittedly reaching. Well, and, and the, the the sentence, right? The sentence that we're supposed to be taking from this is when he goes, and I was never, I never got famous. And she goes, you're famous to me. Oh, it's so dark. It's so, oh, okay. but let, me, let yeah. me explain the meta narrative behind this because she says, you're famous to me. She hands him a guitar and then he turns into the director slash writer of this movie. Yeah, he ages. He becomes old. Yeah, years. now he's 54. Right. 54 but that, yeah. the person who plays the old him that's the director slash writer of this movie. No fucking way. Yeah. Eli, you're so right. This was just his fever dream the whole fucking time. Yeah. This is him being like, you know, I never got famous, but I made a movie about how much my daughter loves me and that weird sex scene we had with her shoes. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the fucking end. <laughs> and also... I never had anything to do with her entire life for the first 27 years, yet for some reason she actually wants to have something to do with me now. Yeah. He never gets yelled at for being a horrible father who abandoned his family on a coin flip that doesn't even make sense because the coin thing was clearly just an upside down cross that he looked at wrong. No. he's And then his daughter gives him the guitar. He turns back into the old version of himself. And then the the screen letters are just like, Jimmy never became famous, but he did get to play the moose. No, he didn't. We the watched moose doesn't him. exist. It's not there. <laughs> it's your movie. It's your, this would be like if Heath in 30 years made a movie about how he scored, didn't score the winning touchdown at the big, <laughs> 
home game where we watch him not score and then the ending credits are like Heath was the football champion after all. <laughs> it's stupid. I did score the winning touchdown. <laughs> And like that's the end of the movie. <gasps> oh my god, who's blue? Who's blue in our script? I am blue. I'm always blue. Okay. <laughs> I just have to tell you guys that Eli's notes this week look my like my notes every week, but usually <laughs> Usually their notes are really intense, right? They're like, I get it. I get it. I'm doing some <laughs> diagramming. And my notes are, I hate you guys so much. Why did you make me watch this? This doesn't make any fucking sense. But Eli's notes literally just say, that place looks stupid, all caps. This movie is stupid, all caps. This movie has no plot. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, some My thoughts, up. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert, future patrons, uh, you will have access to my notes soon enough. Oh no! Where the fuck is the plot? Find plot, find plot, find plot! <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, speaking of that, what is the moral of the story? <laughs> what was the plot of the story? <laughs> you tell me I will, the plot, I will I'll accept tell you the answers that cover any of those questions. What? Anything. Um. Kara, go. Um. You oh oh okay I'm I'm dialing back into Heaven's Gates Hell's Flames. You can do any horrible horrible thing in your life so long as the end of the day you sacrifice your preacher best friend. Yep. <laughs> right. The only person of color in the movie. Yep. Yes. You give him over to Satan and then you'll be okay. You'll be cool. It's cool. It's going to be cool. All right. <laughs> I'll take it. We learned a lesson. <laughs> All right. Well, well, that does it for our review of Laser Us. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another best worst movie for next week. So, Eli, what's on deck? We'll be taking on the supernatural thriller from 1990, Flatliners. Fantastic. <laughs> so, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 296 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Kara for joining us. Is there anything... You want, to, you want to send people anywhere? Any new projects, old projects? Where can they hear more from you? I love skinbooks.com. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That'll take you everywhere you need to go. Mm. That's I love skinbooks.com, the website of Cara Santa Maria. Oh, and apparently also Climate Elites spelled Elites. wrong. Com. Yep. <laughs> climate Elites.com <laughs> will also get you there. And some other ones that I'm waiting for us to be closer friends before I reveal. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. Big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. If you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and d d Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have comments, questions, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services of this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Kara Santa Maria and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright. Promise to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. The grocery store attendees swore a blood oath to never again speak of this. <laughs> Satan angrily went to Guitar Center to get his job back and start his next project. Dan took a weekend shift, even though Bethany said she couldn't switch that weekend. I know that doesn't make sense, but neither did anything else in this fucking movie. <laughs> And interstitial three. Get ready for my Johnny Cash impersonation. I was going to say you're you're June Cash, so get ready. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, Wait, oh yeah. You're she was Southern, June, right? June yeah. Carter, okay. right? Yeah. Did she have yeah. any sort of quirks though? No, it's just yeah. You southern. can see how I She's wrote Reese her Witherspoon lines. doing a really bad Southern accent. <laughs> Dernie, are you trying to score? Like Nailed that? It. That's okay. exactly Nailed right. It. Okay, cool. <laughs> I cannot believe they let you do these ads. This is like so crazy. <laughs>
Oh, you think that's weird? Get ready for this. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.